Hello everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how I'm going to make a sheet for our bushcraft awl. If you watched that video, I had mentioned that I was going to make a sheet because number one, I want to protect the, um, the awl, and number two, I want to protect myself. Or maybe it should be number one, protect myself, and two, protect the awl. But either way. So we're going to make a very, very minimalistic, simple um, leather sheet for this. All right, so I have a, just a little container of water. Um, I have my awl here. Got some stretch wrap. First thing we're going to do is get a little oil. And we're going to put it on the awl. awl. If you never use this stuff, M Pro 7, amazing. Get a little oil on there. Get some of our stretch wrap. And we'll take our leather, place it in the water, and you'll see how pliable it gets. Now we'll take our all, figure out which way we want it. I think I'm going to go to about there. We could always trim it. We're just going to fold this over. And just start to press it in. Now be careful if you have um, long fingernails, because if your fingernail digs in there, it's going to leave a mark. That's really all there is to wet forming. So I'll work that in a little bit more on both sides because I don't want one side flat. Again, this is just going to be a very simple um, sheath. So I'll keep working that in, working it in, and it'll take the form of the awl. And then I'm going to let this dry, and when it's dried, I'll be back. All right, so it's nice and dry. Just a little tip for you to check if it's dry. If you touch it and it feels cold, especially if you put it against your cheek, it's not dry yet. All right, so now the next step we're going to do is we're just going to trim it. We have these shears. I actually picked these up at Harbor Freight, and they're awesome. So I'm just going to trim it. This thing goes through it like butter. And what I'll do is I'll just leave about a half an inch all the way around here. So I'll trim that off camera. And I'll uh, be right back. Okay, so I got a rough trim on it. Um, for all my fishermen buddies out there, uh, very reminiscent of a fillet knife sheath. So now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to dye it. Um, I like to dye it before I glue it. Because um, there was a couple times when I was gluing it, I got some glue where I shouldn't have, and the dye really didn't penetrate like I wanted it to. So I'm just going to give you a sample on how I'm going to dye it. And what I'm going to use is just this... Um, saddle tan from uh, I guess it's called Febrings Fibrings and I have this little applicator here and we'll take our dye give it a little shake first I should definitely wear gloves which I don't have on now but when I finish the project I'll do that so just get a little dye on it Now you don't have to dye it, you can leave it natural. Sometimes I'll mix this tan with some black to get it darker. It all depends on what I'm going after. So I'll do this, I'll dye the whole thing inside and out. And then I'll bring you back and I'll show you what that looks like after it dries. Alright, so we got the dye on there looking good now while this is drying I'm going to give you a quick demo on how I glue this so when it's dried I'll glue it and I'll bring you back at that point so let me get this glove off put this down and I'll show you how I glue it up okay so I just use uh, contact cement that is all kinds of glues you can use but this is what I use you don't want to use a ton of this stuff just enough now just a note it's both on the rough sides, so we're okay, but if it was on the smooth side, they actually make a tool 
where you, you scuff up and remove this uh, finish, the smooth finish, because you want it to be a rough side. So now you just set that aside, and you're going to let that dry. According to the bottle, it says 15 minutes. So basically, when you go to touch it, it's not tacky anymore. So I'll bring you back when that's ready. Okay, so now when you touch this, it's not tacky. So you have pretty much one shot to make sure you get this exactly where you want. I mean, it's not going to be impossible to separate it, but after I do the next step, it's going to be very tough to separate it. So touch them together. And it's glued. Now what I do is I take a hammer. It just has a nylon... Uh, tip on it, uh, end on it, they're interchangeable, and I'll take this and I'll very gently tap the whole area that I glued. If you ever, uh, if you ever saw a cobbler when he's doing shoes, uh, he puts a sole on after he glues it and he goes at it with his hammer. Um, so what that does is that really gets the fibers together and it's glued together. So once um, the dye dries, I'll glue it, and I'll bring you back. I'll show you the next Okay, step. so I have a plethora of tools here, and I'll explain to you what I got. So I have it glued up. So the next thing you do is I'm going to trim this out. And what I do is I made this little gauge out of an old ruler. Okay, and it says outside because I rounded this edge. And I place this right against where the uh, wet mold is. And I'll slice that down just with a regular razor blade. Nice sharp one, okay? So I'll trim that down so I have this width all the way down here. And in lieu of doing it on here because it's kind of awkward the way I have the camera set up and everything, I'll do that off camera, but I'll, uh, you know, that's exactly how I do it. Hold this like this, slice that down. So we'll get that trimmed up. So now after it's trimmed up, Okay, we got a nice edge on it, all right? So I have some tools I made to uh, give me my stitch line. Now, you could use dividers, and they, they sell all kinds of tools to do all this stuff, but again, you know me, I got to make my stuff. So I have two sizes here that I made. They're about a sixteenth of an inch difference, and I would take this tool, and I'll run it down the piece. And I can go around curves and everything. And that gives me a nice line to do my stitches. Now I have these other two tools and these will show show me exactly where to put the holes for the stitches. And I normally use this one. Again, about a sixteenth of an inch difference. Now, if excuse me, if I have a part like this at the top, I'll make this stitch go over it. So I'll start like this. Just make a little mark. and go all the way down the line, okay? I missed that one there, but again, awkward angle. So I'll make my marks. Then I'll take this little punch that I ground down the tip to the exact size of my needle, and I'll take this and I'll place it on those little dots, and I'll get my hammer, which has a brass end also, because you never want to hit metal on metal. So I'll take this and I'll punch through the leather, and then I have my hole. So again, if you you know if you want, you can go out and buy all these tools. They sell punches that have two, three, four, five, six at six holes at one time, and all of that. But again, I have fun making the tools, and that's what I use. Now, if you don't want to do any of that, you could bring this over to your uh, local cobbler if you're lucky enough to have one, and um, they'd be happy to sell it for you. They'd probably only charge you a couple bucks. I find that they they find it kind of interesting to work on something besides you know, shoes and stuff, so um, that's another way you could go. So um, what I'm going to do is let me clear this mess up, and I'll make, the, I'll make a couple holes, and I'll show you how I'm going to sew it. We're going to use a saddle stitch. So let me clear this up, and I'll show you that. All right, the saddle stitch. So for the saddle, uh, saddle stitch, you're going to need two needles, and they're not regular needles. They don't have a point on them, right? So these are uh, special made. They're rounded off. And I have some just uh, wax nylon a thread here is four strand 
Uh, depending on the project, I may actually uh, unwind this and use, you know, just three strands or two strands. Uh, for this project here, I, I might just use two strands because, again, it's not something that, uh, you know, is going to be worn on the hip with a, you know, gun in it or a knife or something like that. So now I just have a couple holes punched. And um, what you're going to want to do is, like, you want to take the total length of the project, okay? Let's say this is, uh, I don't know, five inches long, okay? And you want to go at least four times the length. So if this was five inches long and your stitch line was going to be five inches, you would want to have 20 inches of thread, okay? Hopefully that makes sense because the last thing you want is to get towards the end and not have enough thread to finish it or to get a good grip on it. So, you know, there's sometimes where I'll, I want to be extra sure if I'm doing something really long, I'll just leave a bunch of thread. It's Thread's cheap. You can always get more. Now, this is where something like this would come in handy, too. This is that little stitching pony I made. But for something very small like this, I just do it in my hand. And, uh, you know, it works well like that. So the first thing you're going to do is you get your thread in. Now, sometimes it's stiff. See that? So I have a pair of pliers, and I gently grab it, and I'll pull it through. Then you want to even up both the threads, both ends. Even that up. Now, as I was explaining, for the top, something like this, what I'll do is I'll come over the top, and sometimes I'll come over twice. All depends. Wiggle it through. And I'll give that a nice pull, okay? So that'll hold that top closed. Then you come in, next hole. Now what I like to do on the back, see I'll hold this, I'll pull this up, then I'll take my needle and I'll come in right below that because you don't want to go through the thread and you want to keep it consistent. Then grab it and pull. Now, if you're going to be doing a lot of this, you'll end up cutting your skin. You could use, put a Band-Aid on your fingers in this groove here. Okay. So there we go. Then we take the next one. Come in. Pull it through. Hold it up like that. Take the other one. Push it right through. See how it, it, that thread is there and it comes out at the bottom? It gives a very clean and consistent look. Pull that through. Snug it up. Come back down. Hold that up. Come down the bottom of that. Pull that through. So that's saddle stitching. It's as simple as that. Nice, beautiful, clean threads. Now, when you get towards the end, when you're done, you're going to back stitch. So you're going to come back up into here, go through. You're going to do the same thing in reverse. And I would suggest at least two. So you would end here. Um, you could even do three. All right. So the back stitch kind of knocks it all, uh, ties it all together. And that's pretty much uh, saddle stitching in a nut nutshell. And then uh, the last thing I'll do after I stitch it, I'll take my little hammer with the nylon and just gently tap these down. You can feel them because they're a little proud. Once you tap them down, um, they get nice and flat. And then you're going to cut the excess off and just leave a tiny little bit and take a lighter, light it, press it down, and you're done. Similar to the way you would do with paracord. All right, so there's your little lesson on uh, saddle stitching, and I'll get to the uh, main project, and I'll be back when that's all uh, trimmed and sewed Okay, up. so we got it all stitched up, and I uh, beveled it, and I burnished it, which I'll show you in a second. But I like the way it came out. So this is a beveling tool. So you just take your leather, you run it along the edge. And that makes a nice bevel. Now, 
after you bevel it, you could also use sandpaper for uh, spots you didn't get. Um, this is a uh, beveling tool that I made. You could buy them. And you're going to wet the edge. And you're going to just keep rubbing it, rubbing it, rubbing it, rubbing it until it gets shiny and you can't see the, uh, the two pieces of leather. leather. Now, I made a machine to do it. Um, if anyone's interested in seeing the machine, I'll make another video and I'll show you uh, the machine that I made. But you could, you know, do it by hand. You could use anything, really, that's round, a dowel, plastic, anything like that. But uh, the machine makes it go fast. Um, this video is just getting way too long. But anyway, so you see where you burnish it, you get that nice dark color on the edges, and it makes them so smooth. Now there's uh, other stuff you can put on there, like I think it's called edge coat and all of that. I don't really do that. I just burnish it, and it, with my machine, it makes it nice and dark. So there's two steps left. We're going to condition the leather, and then we're going to put a wax on it. So let me clean this up here. And I'll get the conditioner and we'll finish this project up. Okay, this is the only stuff I use on leather, Lexol. Um, I don't use any kinds of oils. Old time uh, leather guy, um, actually DeSantis, you might recognize the name. I was uh, back and forth at an email with their company and um, he said never ever use any kind of oil. like. I know a lot of people are probably, you know, going to be like, whoa, really? But you're like, leech foot oil or any of that kind of stuff. Um, he said uh, over, over time, it'll ruin leather. So he recommended Lexol, and uh, that's what I use. So now you don't need a lot of this, and the dye is going to come off a little bit because it's fresh. But just a couple drops like that, and just work that into the leather. See, some of it comes off, not a lot. A little bit of this stuff goes a long way. All right, I'm gonna let that dry. Give it a little buff and I'll take you to the final step. Okay, Lexol is dried and buffed. And the last step that I use is just a Kiwi shoe polish in neutral. You'll see the difference. Get yourself a little rag, get a little wax. Okay, so we're going to let that dry and we're going to buff it out. Okay, ready to give it a spit shine. I know you've all heard of that, right? Spit shine? Well, actually, we're just going to use a little water. And I don't want to get it all over here, so I'll take it off camera. Just get a little water on it. But as you can see, it gives it a nice, nice luster. So there it is. I like this color. I like the way, you know, the leather takes it. Different uh, shades. It's got that old-timey look. And then, let's see if it fits. So if you remember, we made it so that this little uh, bump here was towards the front. Boom. Now it's going to be tight when you first use it. It goes right in. Now it's protected and I'm protected. So there you go. There's a simple leather sheath. You can use this idea to make it for a knife or any other tool that you have. Not very hard. And once you start making uh, little sheets like this, you, you end up, all your tools that you have, you end up uh, making uh, sheets for. But um, this video ran a little long. I probably should have made it in a couple parts. But hey, it is what it is. Hopefully you watch the whole thing. And um, like always, everyone, I appreciate your views. I appreciate your comments. And I hope you're having a great day and you found this useful. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.